lovely folks to see so many of you here and we are catching up with one another. Beautiful. So welcome to Swedes this morning at Lisa and also special welcome back for those joining us online. We begin our worship by letting the Christ come up and Nicole would like it for us this morning. We light the Christ candle as a symbol of God's constant presence with us. That God is present here with us, both in this time and place. And in every moment, an aspect of our lives as well. God is present and God is faithful. Today we also, um, as we gather to worship before Australia Day, we acknowledge the Yakara and the Turbo peoples, the first inhabitants of this plain, from time beyond remembering. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. We also acknowledge the many people who came from different nations across the, the ocean that call Australia home. So we acknowledge that the same love and grace that was fully revealed in Christ Jesus, sustained by the first people, and now also the second people, gave us, we pray that God will give us insights continuously. And as we rejoice in the reconciling purpose of God, found in the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us come to God with a call to worship this morning, which is based on Psalm 62. Please join me in the hearts in both forms. Just a heads up, it's a bit short, so pay attention. <laughs> Our souls wait in silence. Our rock, our salvation, our refuge. In this time of worship, Praise God together by singing our praise hymn this morning, which is number 738, My Jesus, My Saviour. The words are on the screen. Please feel, uh, feel free to use the hymn book if you prefer the music. Otherwise, let's stand and sing as you like.
<laughs> we now come to God with our prayer of invocation and compassion. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, you call us into a movement for global transformation, but we sometimes settle for the price of food. You call us into the ongoing work of liberation from evil and injustice, but indifference sometimes fills our hearts. You call us into a movement on peace and mutual care for all living creatures, but those stories of domination, consumption, and greed are well entrenched within our imaginations. We are sorry and need help to become free from the competing programs and allegiance that don't align with your dream for the world. Come, sacred boys of love, speak your words into our lives this morning. Cross over all distance and any obstacles in the way to be with us here and now. Come, sacred boys of love, come. We ask this in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we know God, his eyes are on us. His eyes of grace, his eyes of unending love. They are with us, and we know that. His, what his mouth will say next, there is always a way back to, go, to you, God. A way back to love. And we can start again. You claim us, you forgive us. We can start again. Friends, you are forgiven. You can start again, again. And speak to God. Let's continue to worship love as we sing together this beautiful hymn. It's number 598. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, please stand and sing as you are able.
so with you. Peace be with you. Church council meetings today, four o'clock in the church, nice and cool. Um, yeah, so just um, yeah, important council meetings. Just pray for Carlo, church council, Claire, Nicole, Sven, Eunice, Paul, myself, Louisa, as we um, um, as we pray and discern and plan for missional activities and uh, make decisions on budgets, property maintenance, etc. for the year ahead and plan for that three and five year mission plan for the church and what the church is going to look like. Please keep us all in your prayers. We had our first Bible study of the year on Friday, which was great. We looked at the, the uh, book of Psalms, Psalm 1. Um, so we're going to be having regular Bible study on the second and fourth Fridays of each month. We're going to start, we're going to start from 6.30. We have a Bible study starting at 7 o'clock. So um, put that in your diaries. We'll have uh, some next ones Friday at 9 February, I believe. But yeah, it, um, everyone's welcome to come along, um, pretty casual and relaxed, and we just uh, have a time of fellowship and look at a passage or two from home. Dinner social in February, so we're planning on having a dinner social somewhere. Um, not quite sure where and when yet. Um, if you have to come along, have a chat with me, let me all stay, um, and we'll give more details um, in the future announcements. And one last announcement I mentioned, mentioned it last week, which wasn't here. Um, and Andy and Andy, um, huge congratulations on your engagement, such exciting news. Um, if you see Andy in the service, have a, a big spike of engagement with me. So, awesome and exciting news. Congratulations. Uh, and that's what I'm going to say. Thank you. Yes, I'll remember you and Andy and your family when you you plan your big day. <laughs> so now um, we turn to the scriptures. People will read the Bible passages first.
Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29-31. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Those who mourn as if they do not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it was not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. This is the living world. Thanks, Peter. Before we hear the message, continuing on the theme of the first quarter of the year, Engage, let us pray. Lord, as we explore your word this morning, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and redeemer. In Jesus' name, Amen. So last week, the readings were all centered on a central theme, which was recognizing the call of God and responding to the invitation from Jesus to engage with his word meditate in a good space and to engage in inviting others to see for themselves who Jesus is and his way. Last week in the uh, story in Samuel, we heard the story of what it means to tune in to God, a story which highlighted the faith of Eli, the elder priest, and the obedience of Samuel, a young boy who did not even really know God. In the Gospel story of John chapter 1, we heard the story of the call and response of Philip and Nathaniel, and how John uses such rich language and imagery to communicate God's promises of hope and restoration. The invitation also to everyone. So we were reminded of the pattern of call and response. Seen through our scripture, a pattern that is at the very heart of our identity, an understanding of a God who chooses to be in relationship with us. This week, we see the same pattern of call and response, told through another generally very well-known story. The kingdom of God is the dazzling reality that Jesus is always painting. The beautiful dream he tells stories about, and every breath, every compassionate act, every word that Jesus speaks is a summon and an invitation for people to take their place within God's dream for our world. The invitation is for everyone, as I said, but it rests on a willingness to make a decisive break with old assumptions, old habits, and old allegiances. So today we will look a bit more deeper into this story. Jesus called his first disciples in Mark chapter 1 that Peter just read for us. This story is fairly short and to the point. Jesus approaches some fishermen and says, Follow me. Fishermen leave what they are doing and follow him. In our modern and so social networking driven society, if you were to hear the words follow me, you would most likely look for one of a few different symbols. Let's see how many of them there anyway. were. I think I can only get related to three or maybe four. So to follow someone in our world today, 
usually means to receive updates. We keep an eye on, at least another person's words, actions, photos, thoughts, or opinions through interconnected social media networks. Fortunately for us, or perhaps unfortunately, despite the brevity of words in the Gospel of Mark, there is so much more to the story and to follow it than this. So to understand this, though, we must take a closer look at verses 14 and 15. Another, oh sorry, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. We can't and believe the good news. Let's break these two verses into smaller parts and dig deeper. The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The time has come, or another version, the time is fulfilled. It's responding to Mark verse 1, the beginning of the gospel, which states that the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way. Prophecy reference to Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. And the kingdom of God has come near. In another version, it might read, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is both the one who proclaims, the proclaimer, and the one who is proclaimed. He does not merely proclaim the kingdom of God. He brings the kingdom of God. So Jesus' call to the disciples is both powerful and authoritative, and the disciples respond according to the passage and note immediately. In other version of the Bible, they say at once. And now look at these two words: we can't and believe. We can is a moralistic, intellectual, and emotional response. In Greek, metanoin, correct me if I said it wrongly, <laughs> some of the experts here, does, it literally means to change one's mind. In Hebrew, shock means to do a 180 degree turn. You're facing this side of the you turn in Okay. So similarly, the Greek and Hebrew words for belief do not separate thought from action. Hmm. And look at another familiar story, Jonah, which is in the Old Testament story for this week. We will not read in full details today, but I recommend you to read it this week. So who we can't Jonah. Anyway, they you eventually repented and followed God. But Jesus' call to repent is to reorient one's whole attitude to God in the face of his coming kingdom. It therefore includes within it the demand of faith. New Testament idea of repentance involves turning around intellectually, spiritually, and physically, evidenced by a change in our behavior. This reorientation can only be carried out through faith that can ultimately change our deepest desire and ultimately leads to following Jesus in his way through the cross to resurrection. In Mark, the word gospel is something the evangelist gives to 
for his whole work, which includes Jesus' way to the cross and res resurrection. It is in this whole story that the kingdom, or reign of God, draws near and is fulfilled. It is in the light of the whole story that we are called to repent and believe. The call of the disciples, which follows them, is not simply a call to accept certain timeless truths, but to be attached to the person of Jesus, to go along with him in his way, to follow a way which will lead to the cross and also fullness of life. So, back, get back to the story. What is interesting is precisely what um, we are not told in this story. There's nothing about the motivation or either Jesus, I mean, the motivation of Jesus or the disciples. And there's nothing as to whether they had any prior knowledge of one another. There was also nothing about there was to be what to be lost or gained. So what does happen? Jesus' call is authoritative. Come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. This is in verse 17. And the response is immediate. Fisherman Andrew and his brother Simon act on faith, but not a faith that appreciates or understands what is happening. Nothing in the text indicates that the disciples received any reward of their discipleship. In fact, later, when James and John approached Jesus with a request about sitting near him in glory, They are sharply rebuilt, as in Mark 10, uh, verses 35 to 40, if you're interested in reading it. The only thing the disciples are promised is, in fact, persecution and conflict, noted in Mark chapter 13. So, nothing in the text, also, nothing tells us why they do and what they do. Somehow they are compelled to the summons of come, follow me, to follow a man whom they cannot understand on a journey that will perplex and confuse them to a destination as yet unspecified. In following Jesus, day and body, what it means. Become narrow, 
Some labels I had are clues, like ways of greed, ways of violence and retaliation, and ways of callous indifference, and so on. But surely we will also see Jesus on the path before us, leading us, ushering us into our full fullness, most exhilarating and risk and risky sometimes vocations and ways of being human. Hmm. Jesus summoned to us human, children of God, his creation, that the reign of God has come here. We can't and believe in the good news. For two weeks, we have read and heard stories of great faith from people who responded to the call of God. People who were engaged with what Jesus was saying responded to his invitation to come and see and summoned to come and follow me. Sometimes it is easy to look at these stories as model Christians who got it right. Brothers and sisters, please be encouraged that none of these people had it all together. None of them came from a perfect family. None of these people were even Christians. And none of these people had a clue what lay in store for them. So, no excuses for us. Well, let us also reflect on the short reading in the letter that Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 29 to 31, we might, his brothers and sisters, and I believe also us, that the time is short. No matter if you are married, in mourning, happy with your life, he is an interesting one. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. Santa has spoke to me very deeply. Is the time is short. Sisters and brothers, the Bible did mention that when the end of the world is drawn near, there will be wars, nation up against nations, and there will be natural disasters, floods, earthquakes. The time is short. And in the gospel story, there's also that line, the time has come. Jesus is calling you and me to engage, to hear the good news, in hearing and also sharing the good news, in things that are of eternal value, living a meaningful life following Jesus, so that we ourselves, our family, and many more people can receive his salvation and enter into eternal life. Together with all those who believed and followed Christ. As we noted earlier, none of these people had it all together. None of these people were even Christians when Jesus called them. But every single one of them recognized the authority of the one who calls. Every single one of them was obedient, immediately responded to the call. Every single one of them could sing with the psalmist who wrote the psalm for us this week in Psalm 62. The Lord is my rock and my salvation, the one in whom I find refuge and hope. Christ called, come. Follow me. What is your response? Let's spend a short moment in silent reflection and prayer as you respond to Jesus.
We want to engage in your mission of bringing salvation, bringing your kingdom to the here and now. We repent and believe and welcome your Holy Spirit to lead us in our life. Amen. Come now also, let us, uh, lead us by your Spirit, Lord, as we respond by singing together. This might be a bit new for anyone, but let's try this very beautiful theme written by the Iona community in Scotland. Will you come and follow me? It's not in our hymn book. For those who like copy, let me know. The words are on the screen. Let's stand and sing as you are able. Small off 
Well, well, I think it's resting. Might be wearing a moon boot. I can't remember what it was. But yes, so for another week. So pray for him to continue to heal. Yes, speedily. And thank you for answering prayer, healing for illness. Um, let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for your goodness in our lives, including answered prayers for healing for Randy, Ron, Eunice, and others. We think of those who are less fortunate, those who are ill, those who are grieving, those who have come upon difficult times, and those who need you. We pray especially for the people and communities who are recovering and rebuilding after floods and bushfires. Please protect the communities in North Queensland where yet another cyclone is going to affect them next week. Merciful God, we continue to pray for the situation in Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, Yemen, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and now escalation between Iran and Pakistan. We pray for peaceful resolutions and an end to the suffering of innocent people in those areas. May you give hope to those who are desperate. As Australia Day is approaching, we praise you for what a great country that we live in. But Lord, we pray for unity and reconciliation in our country. Please silence the divisive tones and bring healing, justice, and peace to our nation as we celebrate who we are as a nation together and as we build a better future for our country together. We also pray for those who care for others with needs, that you will strengthen them through their sense of responsibility and the sense of calling to serve the most vulnerable in our society. Grant them peace and provide opportunity and assistance from others so that they can rest and recharge. Lord Jesus, we also ask that you bless all our children, grandchildren, and the teachers in all the school and uni communities for the new school year ahead. We ask that you give our children wisdom and strength. Surround them with supportive and encouraging teachers and friends. Guide their spirit deep within. And help them think wisely and play safe. May learning be their deepest desire and be safe and strong to reach their goals. Please grow in them a desire to seek you and follow you. And may they reflect your love and grace to those around them and raise them up as leaders, speaking of your truth to this generation. And Lord, please also bless all the teachers, teachers' aides, and we reach out to our very own lady, all the lecturers, educators, school chaplains, our volunteers, and all those who are in the positions to help students to learn. We thank you, Lord, for their willingness to invest in the future of our children. Please give them the wisdom, creativity, and strength that they need from you, as they impart knowledge and wisdom to their students through you. Help them sense your presence and your delight, and may you bring joy and fulfillment to them in what they do. Lord, well, we also pray for all the parents and the learning communities. May parents and guardians joyfully entrust their children into your loving hands. Oh, in particular, I'm thinking of the RI programs as well. And to those who can help raise their children according to the biblical teachings. Provide them with a strong and supportive learning community. Where everyone will be blessed with your life peace and joy as they seek to help students learn and grow new skills and righteous characters. Lord, help them and also help all of us to hear your call and 
gladly follow your way that leads to the fullness of life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us also join together in the words that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh, we form this place of worship. Let us sing together. That's number 547. Be thou my bishop. Let's stand and sing as you are able. Be with you today.